In a business office, two men were having a serious conversation. One heavily troubled by a business and personal crisis sat dejectedly, a picture of despair. Together these men had explored the problem from every angle but seemingly without result, which only served to deepen the troubled man's discouragement. I guess no power on earth can save me, he sighed. The other reflected for a moment, then spoke rather diffidently. I wouldn't look at it that way. Personally, I believe there's an answer to every problem. There is a power that can help you. Then slowly he asked, why not try prayer power? He learned practical prayer techniques, and in due course, matters turned out satisfactorily. Not that he didn't have difficulties. In fact, he had rather a hard time of it, but ultimately he worked out of his trouble. Now he believes in prayer power so enthusiastically that I recently heard him say, every problem can be solved and solved right if you pray. A businessman with a creative and unique mind worked out a simple formula for solving his problems and overcoming his difficulties through prayer power. It is a curious formula, but I have practiced it and personally know that it works. The formula is this, prayerize, picturize, actualize. By prayerize, my friend meant a daily system of creative prayer. When a problem arose, he talked it over with God very simply and directly. Moreover, he did not talk with God as to some vast and far-off shadowy being, but conceived of God as being with him in his office, in his home, on the street, in his car, always nearby as a partner or as a close associate. This man prayerized his daily life. The second and third points in his formula go together. When either failure or success is picturized, it strongly tends to actualize in terms equivalent to the mental image pictured. To assure something worthwhile happening, first pray about it and test it according to God's will. Then print a picture of it on your mind as happening, holding the picture firmly in consciousness. Work hard and intelligently, thus doing your part. Practice believing and continue to hold the picturization firmly in your thoughts. You will be astonished at the strange ways in which the thing prayed about and pictured will actually come to pass. For example, a woman discovered that her husband was drifting from her. Theirs had been a happy marriage, but the wife had become preoccupied in social affairs and the husband had become busy in his work. Before they knew it, the close old-time companionship was lost. One day, she discovered his interest in another woman. She lost her head and became hysterical. She consulted her minister, who adroitly turned the conversation to herself. She admitted being a careless homemaker and that she had also become self-centered, sharp-tongued, and nagging. She then confessed that she had never felt herself the equal of her husband. She had a profound sense of inferiority regarding him, feeling unable to maintain equality with him socially and intellectually. So she retreated into an antagonistic attitude that manifested itself in petulance and criticism. Accordingly, she became unattractive. The minister saw that the woman had more talent, ability, and charm than she was revealing. He suggested that she create an image or picture of herself as capable and as attractive. He gave her instructions in how to pray and how spiritually to picturize. He also advised her to hold a mental image of the restoration of the old time companionship, to picture a restored harmony. She was to hold this picture with faith. About this time, her husband informed her that he wanted a divorce. She had conquered herself to the extent of being able to receive this request with calmness. She simply replied that she was willing if he wanted it, but suggested a deferral of the decision for 90 days on the ground that divorce is so final. If at the end of 90 days you still feel you want a divorce, I will cooperate with you. She said this calmly. He gave her a quizzical look, for he had expected an outburst. Night after night, he went out, and night after night, she sat at home. But she pictured him as seated in his old chair. 
She painted an image of him there comfortably reading as in the old days. She visualized him as puttering around the house, painting and fixing things as he had formerly done. She visualized the two of them playing golf together and taking hikes as they once did. She maintained this picture with steady faith, and one night there he actually sat in his old chair. She looked twice to be sure that it was the reality rather than the picturization, but perhaps a picturization is a reality, for at any rate, the actual man was there. Occasionally he would be gone, but more and more nights he sat in his chair. Then he began to read to her as in the old days. Then, one nice Saturday afternoon, he asked, what do you say to a game of golf? The days went by pleasantly until she realized that the 90th day had arrived. So that evening she said quietly, Bob, this is the 90th day. What do you mean, he asked, puzzled, the 90th day. Why, don't you remember? We agreed to wait 90 days to settle that divorce matter, and this is the day. He looked at her for a moment, then hidden behind his paper, turned to Paige, saying, Don't be silly. I couldn't possibly get along without you. Where did you ever get the idea I was going to leave you? The formula proved a powerful mechanism. This woman prayerized. She picturized. And the sought-for result was actualized. Prayer power scientifically solved her problem and his as well.